You're listening to the Dudes and Dads Podcast, a show dedicated to helping men be better dudes and dads by building community through meaningful conversation and storytelling. And now, here are your hosts, Joel DeMott and Andy Lehman. Joel, we are back. We are still here amidst the, amidst the uh, coronavirus thing, uh, but we are back and we're still doing this show and it's been fun. So welcome back, Joel. And still, <laughs> and still virus free. Again, See, right. I, just, I still. want to uh, celebrate the wins. You celebrate the wins, Andy, right. and we are virus free. For now, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping for free, good. But. By the way, and right. mask free. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. Well, hey, you know, guys, I want to uh, thank you guys for uh, yeah joining us again, right? I mean, like it seems like it's been a while, but we want to thank our, our Patreon supporters uh, who are uh, supporting us through this time here. Uh, thank you guys for for helping us support this show. J- yeah, also so grateful for uh, the yeah, just the. Uh, the ongoing support and uh, just want to want to invite you guys also, man, uh, don't hesitate. Let people know about the show, uh, share it with them. People've got, people've got more podcast listening time on their hands now. So uh, let's make use of it. <laughs> and uh, we are, and really and Andy, I mean, some of the episodes, this one included some of the episodes we have coming up are just um, there's kind of a theme here. There's a, a of kind of uh, speaking to some of the, larger issues that we're all facing in terms of uh, kind of na- how to navigate some serious life circumstances, how to do it well, and uh, hopefully uh, stay sane through all of it. So uh, feel free, uh, invite people to listen and p- invite people to share. We're, we're grateful for all of you. Well, we have a great uh, topic tonight, but first, before we do that, Joel. What's brewing? What's brewing? What's brewing? What's brewing? Well, Andy, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> uh, what do you got brewing over there? Brewing tonight? Uh, we, yeah, yeah. Well, we just want to, uh, again, give a shout out to all of our local roasters around here. And I should say, Andy, we're gonna, I'm going to have to get another pound. Um, I forget about, I have forgotten about, but I want to include them. Um, our friends over in Elkhart at Steelyard uh, Roasters, uh, other great folks down there so uh we're gonna i think our next uh pound of coffee is gonna be from them but uh we're uh we're drinking electric brew again here tonight there's sumatra and uh andy just in case you were wondering that it's a lovely indonesian coffee semi-washed and and fully washed uh grown at an elevation of 3700 feet i know uh totally (laughs) organic uh we've got notes a nice full body on this syrupy acid medium high earthy some chocolate and caramel or caramel if you Depending, pronounce it yeah. incorrectly so uh <laughs> uh want to give a shout out to the electric brew as always guys they do have um you can get stuff from them still online uh and so uh, Myron and your whole crew out there at Electric Brew, we love you. We support you. We and, thank you. Uh, I'm ordering more coffee here soon. So thank you. Uh, so let's get into our topic really quick tonight because we have a, a great topic. Joel, can you introduce our guest tonight? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, so Joe Rudy, my good friend, uh, my stunt double. Hey! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, is here with us uh, tonight. Uh, Joe and I met uh, going on, uh, well, it's, oh, golly, uh, three years ago. Is that um, right? I know, time is flying, time wow. is flying by. Uh, when we were in a youth ministry a leadership cohort together, yeah. uh, uh, one of the greatest experiences of both my personal and professional life, walked out of there with a lot of new friends, and we're, we all still stay in touch with each other as we can. Joe has been on the recording list for some time and it only took an uh international pandemic that's right. to get him on for us to <laughs> us to get that's right. him on that's right that's right uh so joe is uh joe is long-standing youth worker now professional bus driver that's right uh he's done so many licensed things. licensed officially right. you know they don't just let anybody no, no, uh, no. drive those buses you gotta pass Test, man. You got to pass test. You do. I get weird looks when I try to <laughs> try to, you know, take a bus on a joyride, and uh, rightfully so. But yeah. uh, Joe, so dude, 
we we always want to hear the life story first. We want to hear about you, get to know sure. you, and then we want to really move to uh, some events that transpired a couple of years ago that are that things are still kind of playing out, so oh, yeah. to speak. Um, but uh, in in the really just interesting. Uh, events that you have uh, participated in and kind of been acquainted with, but let's, let's start with your life. Tell us about, tell us about yourself, uh, growing up family, all that good stuff. And then we'll, uh, we'll get onto the second uh, segment as well. Nice. That sounds good. Well, fellas, it's a joy. And oh. thank you so much for letting me be oh. here. It's exciting. I really appreciate it. It's a long time coming in my mind. <laughs> okay, so this is good. Yes. Really good. So, uh, yeah, name is Joe Rudy and, uh, my wife, uh, my wife's name is, is tree. Her birth name is Trisha. Um, uh, but she's gone by tree, uh, for as long as I've known her. And since uh, she was a little kid tree bug, they dropped the bug when she turned into a teenager, I think. But yeah. So, uh, my wife tree and I have been married for, uh, 21 years, I think. And, uh, we've got two kids, Max, my son, Max is going to be 21 this year. Uh, and my daughter, Aubrey, who's 18. So Max has graduated out of high school and Aubrey's a senior this year. So it's kind of an interesting thing to uh, yes, but, uh, yes. We're residents in Noblesville, Indiana. So we're just on the north side of uh, Indianapolis. Uh, and uh, uh, we've lived here for 20 years, I guess. Yeah, or pretty much our whole time. But, but love our town, man. Noblesville is pretty great. And uh, I'm glad that we chose this as our home. I grew up on the north side of uh, Indianapolis, uh, the far north side, uh, Washington Township Schools, went to North Central High School, that kind of stuff. Uh, grew up on a, on a dead-end street on the north side with my uh, mom and my dad and my sister. And uh, that was a central street. Was, was, was it? it was a dead-end street, man. We were at the end of First Baptist <laughs> Church was on the, uh, the other side where I played Little League, right? And uh, anyway, grew there. Parents divorced when I was like in fourth grade, kind of world changed, right? And uh, moved into uh, with my mom, stayed with my mom, my sister, I did, and, and moved into an apartment. It's the first time that I'd ever kind of experienced that kind of life. And it was a uh, really kind of an interesting experience how all that worked out. It was, uh, it was tough for sure. Uh, changing schools, right. From entering into sixth grade at like a middle school level and, and changing schools and whatnot. But, uh, I'm glad that I had the experience and that the school stuff was, was pretty awesome. It was going from knowing everybody kind of in your class as an elementary kid to starting out in a different school and not knowing a soul, uh, which was, uh, terrifying, but, uh, I made it, you know? And, uh, so that was interesting. But uh, went to North Central High School, and, you know, I swam in high school. I played rugby in high school. Um, graduated my last year. I took off and, and moved up to uh, Kokomo to go give it a shot to live with my dad when he finally had a, had a place. And uh, my dad and my stepmom up there and was living the, the PK life up there, preacher's kid life up there, right? So uh, my stepmom was a pastor at the Disciples of Christ Church up in Kokomo and lived up there for a little bit and uh, was heavily involved in choir growing up. Uh, that was probably uh, one of my biggest things. And North Central, we had the, the uh, Kings Court Singers, which I'm really proud of. And that was our madrigal choir. And I was the jester. That was kind of awesome. I liked wearing the outfits and the tights. That was, uh, <laughs> right. But did the whole show choir bit. My, my, uh, my daughter now does that uh, for Noblesville, which is awesome. And so I've been a part of the, uh, uh, our uh, being a dad and being a roadie right for the, uh, for the show choir gig and traveling the show choir circuit uh, has been, uh, has been pretty awesome this last time as well. Anyway, moving on from high school, went to uh, graduated early cause I had to get out of Kokomo, man. It was awful. And, uh, uh, went to IPY and for college and did some paramedic science and social work stuff while I was there. And, and that was awesome. Uh, got my EMT certification and, and did some ambulance driving and, and riding with that and, kind of had that experience to go from, uh, took off and, uh, drove my 1983 Bonneville with my futon strapped on the roof and took off and went to Oregon. Cause I felt like I needed to just get out, right. Be gone. And, uh, was out there for a while. And, uh, that was a great experience. Really, uh, had a lot of fun. It was Western Oregon state college, man, made it way out to Monmouth, Oregon. That place is beautiful out there. I had to get away from Indiana to realize that, I am an Indiana, right? Like I'm a Hoosier, right? I didn't realize how much I missed it until I got away. So uh, when I when I came back, finally came back after being gone for a while, uh, it was the first time in my life that I ever smelled the corn, which is uh, bizarre, but uh, uh, it was a, it was a good feeling. 
so came back, um, uh, gosh, man, moved, uh, moved around did, uh, a whole bunch of apartments and roommates and, you know, that kind of stuff and, and worked different jobs as a carpenter's apprentice for a while and did some trainings and things like that around and landed on social work. I'd always done social work kind of my whole life. When I was a kid growing up, uh, I went to church camp was a big deal for me. And, uh, so, uh, it was, a uh, Lake Barbie and Indian Lake and, uh, oh my gosh, just all over the place. It was awesome. But while I was at church camp, uh, that really, that was where I felt like I could kind of be me. It was where my, my faith really kind of, uh, blossomed. Uh, and I felt like I owned it, you know, and, and I got to, got to kind of know myself with that. I also realized that every year at camp, I was always the kid that helped out with uh, any kids that we had that had a disability or something, you know, if there was a kid in a wheelchair, man, I was usually the one that was hanging out with them and making sure that they got to, you know, their meal or, or went from activity to activity or whatever. I don't know why I just felt comfortable around that. And I had kind of dawned on me at that, uh, after I had gotten back and was working in the field of social work that I'd been kind of doing that my whole life. Uh, in terms of working with people with disabilities, whether it was severe or uh, really minimal, just trying to help people out and being a part of that. I don't know, something cooler about being at the end of the group too and kind of watching everybody else kind of rush on and go do their stuff, but you're kind of lollygagging back there, bringing everybody up. <laughs> oh, was kind of cool. I liked that. Yeah. So anyway, man, did, did all that stuff. And, and uh, then Memorial Day weekend in 98, man, is kind of where it all changed. That's when uh, – it shifted from being kind of a bachelor and floating around and having all these different jobs that, uh, that, uh, my buddy Mike called me up and said, Hey, Hey man, what are you, what are you doing tonight? I had just gone to the Indy 500 at 98 and, and, uh, <laughs> he said, Hey, uh, come on up. We're going to have a bonfire. You, you need to come. And I was like, no way, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, I was at the Indy 500 with my uncle and my cousin and I'm going to go home and take a nap. I'm all right. <laughs> he goes, no, no, no. We're having this big bonfire. You got to come up here, man. Uh, trees coming and she was asking about you. And I was like, I'm on my way. And right <laughs> so that was the night that it started for my wife and I, which was, which was big. So that was our first, we knew each other in high school, but never dated or anything like that. But that May 98, that was when, uh, that was when it all went down. And then we got married in, uh, in August of 98, uh, same year, just about three months, but we took off and we're backpacking over in Europe and spent a month, 30 nights and days in a two-man tent hiking and walking across Europe, got married in Oxford, England, came back, uh, got a house, made a couple kids, and, uh, you know, there it just all started, right? All Why? of a sudden we're entrenched, right? Why is there not a movie made about it? I, this is, uh, you know, There's... I just think, I think about how boring, I, I thought, you know, I thought my, uh, my early, you know, my, my early relationship years were so exciting, and uh, I just, I'm, I'm bored with myself now after Man, hearing, uh, I tell you what, it's, it's a little crazy when you go through all that. Cause you want to stop and like focus in on all the yeah, stuff yeah, that yeah. happened in there, man. It's so crazy, but it is, uh, it has been an incredible, uh, an incredible life, uh, now. And even, even being kind of cooped up, I don't want to say completely boarded up at home right now in the past couple of weeks, but just being cooped up and realizing how, uh, how much we have, mm. you know, my wife and I, and, and yep. what we've built, um, is, uh, has been kind of amazing, uh, to just kind of go over that. Think about the things we've, the places we've been, uh, the people, uh, that, that we've gotten to share them with the different jobs that we've had and, uh, our kids and what they're off and going to do now. Holy cow. It's, uh, it's just, uh, it's really different. So anyway, we, we, um, we settled and are here in, in Noblesville and, and loving it. And now we're getting to the point where we're almost empty nesters, man. Like, and that's bizarre. I know it's really bizarre. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of work in, uh, the, uh, the social work stuff that was all group homes, apartment programs for clients with disabilities. That was like my nine to five or right. Like my day job. <clears throat> And then uh, about 11 years ago is when it all transitioned to where I was called to youth ministry uh, and how that just kind of, it's just fascinating to me sometimes how God puts that stuff in your life and says, hey, I want you to do this now. So um, that was, uh, that was really cool. Um, but yeah, man, we're, we're, uh, we're doing well. We've got my, my stepdad passed away not long, uh, you know, probably five years ago, I guess now. And my mom lives out back. We rebuilt out uh, the carriage house out behind our house and, so we put her up in her tree house, we call it back there. And so she's close by trees. Folks are in Greentown, not too terribly far from Noblesville. And, 
so we've got a lot of family that's uh, that's close by, which we just feel so blessed that we've got all that. You know, that's pretty awesome. So let's Beautiful. talk a little. Let's talk a little bit about that that change. You know, you said you went into youth ministry. How did that happen? What what call? Like, how did God call you to that? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, growing up in the whole church camp bit and having my youth group as a kid, uh, all through middle school, high school, uh, I'm still in touch with those friends now, you know, I mean, not like we talk to each other, but we know where everybody is, right? Mm -hmm. So we could tap on them if we had to, which is pretty cool. That part of my life and that faith development, that was humongous. And I knew that the church was, uh, that the church was with me and I was with the church. Right. I just, <laughs> just mm-hmm. saw this thing about star Wars, but I am one with the force and the force is with me. <laughs> I feel like kind of like that with, with, with my faith a little bit. I'm one with Jesus and Jesus is with me. So, um, when, when Max, this was golly, I can't figure out a specific year. It's 2008, I guess, right? So, like, what I remember in my mind was that the the Wii was was popular and Guitar Hero was a big deal, right? <laughs> and Max, my son, was uh, was just just old enough to like be super interested in all that. We were at our church at Bethel Lutheran Church in Noblesville, and our youth group was playing the the Guitar Hero Wii game on the screen in the sanctuary. Yes, and we're like, oh my gosh, yes. this is so cool. So yes. we stood in the back of the narthex and we're like pacing like caged lions, almost like looking in the sanctuary. Right. And then, uh, the kids, the high school kids at the time and the youth leader at the time, Shelly, she, she looks out and she's like, you guys want to come in and play? And we're like, Oh, us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. We'd like to come and play. That'd be great. So I just wanted to be around and be a part of the youth ministry stuff that was happening at our church. Uh, wanted my kids to know the youth ministry at our church wanted them to know uh, the other kids that were, you know, high schoolers. And then when, you know, Max was in elementary school, you know, uh, or earlier. And um, I started volunteering and helping out with the youth ministry stuff because I just wanted to be in that environment. I wanted to be in that crowd. I wanted to help. I wanted to be a part of that so that other kids would have that same feeling I, I was hoping, right, that I had where I had all these friends in my youth group that went to different schools and we didn't go to school together, but we were in the same boat together. Right. And so I just wanted them to, uh, I wanted other kids to have that as well. Shelly calls me one night, uh, when I was driving home from work uh, in Indianapolis, I commuted a lot. I drove a lot. And she says, uh, she tells me that she's, uh, she's going, uh, she's going back to school and she's going to go back to school, family counseling. And I was like, that's amazing. That's so great. I'm happy for you. And uh, I was sitting on church council at the time. I, you know, I kind of moved up the, the leadership levels at our church, right? Things like that. And uh, she said, uh, do you think you'd be interested in, in maybe doing my job? And I just remember s- just like screaming inside, being like, yes, I would totally do that, right? I absolutely do that. But I was like, you know, um, just, I think, you know, sitting on council, I think we'll take a break from the salary stuff. And <laughs> this isn't so bad. We'll still be around and volunteer, right? This is okay. But then others came and they were just like, we have to fill this position. Would you be interested? And I was like, man, I don't know. Yes. I mean, I, yes, I'm very interested, but quitting my job and giving up our health benefits and, and coming and working full time at the church and ministry when, you know, I didn't go to seminary, right? I grew up in the church and I'm strong in my faith and I, and I, and I feel confident about speaking and learning. And I know I can do it if I just apply myself and, and, and attempt to learn. And uh, I started praying a little more focused to God and saying, hey, God, if you want me to do this, I need you to, I need you to hit me a little. I need you to be a little more blunt with me. I'm, <laughs> I'm struggling. I mean, I, I don't hurt me, but, you know help me know that this is really what I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And, a, and a, a gentleman that I trust uh, and highly hold in high regard at, at church um, pulled me aside and said, um, this is meant for you. This is, this is what you, you should do. If you are even teetering at all, uh, please pray more and know that I feel that this is what you should do. Um, and so I did, I prayed about it some more. We talked about his family and, um, it, it just kind of morphed and it was just so obvious that that's what I needed to do. Um, that no other word in that call. Mm-hmm. I had no other feeling than a call to say like, this, this is what I'm supposed to go do. Um, and this is my purpose, right? This is it. Um, so it, it was really, it was, it was nice and it was convenient 
and it worked out. And then to me and what I talk to other kids about too, is when you feel like things are happening or it's a coincidence or doors open or, um, you know, things just seem to flow. Then to me, that's God's way of saying, yes, you're on the right path. Please keep coming. Please keep coming. And it's not until you get those, those, uh, uh, those doors closed, right? When you, when you have to like stop what you're doing, think about your next move or anything that, that uh, uh, you really need to like consult others and all that. I just kept going because it was just so, it was just so easy and it felt so right. And all the people that were, that were so important to me in my life were all on board with this, right? My wife, most importantly, right? Like that was yeah. the biggest thing. That's a big So as a family, that's, that was a transition. And that was a big change in our life, you know? That was a big, a big change in our life. And we have so much to show for it now because of it. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. So uh, a while back ago, so you were doing the, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, you were, you were, dealing with facility stuff at church. Yeah. Yeah. So when I took the job, that's a really good point. When I took the job, I, I said, uh, and I told you I sat on church council. So I kind of knew some nuts and bolts with the church stuff. I also, in my social work world, I was very, uh, one of the few men in that field. And so, and I also had a truck. So I was the mover of all things, <laughs> the mover of all things. Right. So, uh, um, that kind of went hand in hand. I said, uh, we needed a property manager at the time at our church. And I was like, listen, I can do both of those things. You know, I'm happy to do both of those things. And as a church, they were just like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. So I became the youth, the youth pastor, youth director, youth leader for our high school youth and the property manager for Bethel. And we just kind of put it all together. And everybody's like, well, that's convenient. You got a natural work for that's that goes great. With all yeah. the moving mulch <laughs> yeah, and all that stuff, right? <laughs> eh, sort of, kind of, right? It, but it was pretty fantastic. For me, it was a perfect fit, and that was another part of the whole God bit of just saying, like, this is, I'm making this for you, right? I need you to do this. Yeah. 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 So, um, and then you got uh, this wild idea to become a bus driver. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and I, I just liked the, the way you put it because it was, you took the route that no one else wanted. It's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's true. So uh, there's a little, uh, so the teensy backstory on the bus driver stuff was that Max and I, uh, in elementary school, um, we watched a movie called The World's Fastest Indian. Have you guys seen this? Do you know of it? No. So uh, Anthony Hopkins is the lead character, or the lead actor, and I can't remember the gentleman's name that he portrayed, but it's a true story on this uh, uh, this this guy from New Zealand who builds uh, a particular type of motorcycle. The Indian, Indian motorcycle. Is the motorcycle, yes, right, yes. right. So uh, it's a great story. I highly recommend it, and, and and just a wonderful story. But Max and I watched this. Basically, this old guy brings this particular motorcycle to the salt flats in Utah from New Zealand, and it's one of those lay down kind, right? And so, and he runs it out as wide open as he can, and he breaks right. records for that particular side DC engine. And it's just unbelievable on his, how he gets there and how he does it. So Max and I had said when he was little in elementary school, we were like, uh, when you graduate high school, we're going to go to the salt flats. We're riding motorcycles to the salt flats and we're going to open them up and just go as, as fast as we can go. And he was like, yes. And so like every day in elementary school, I pick him up in my truck and like once a week, I promise you guys once a week, he get in the, he get in the truck, man. And he'd be like dead. Do you think about it today? <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, buddy, I thought about it today, right? So we we worked on that for a long time. So in uh, when it was graduation stuff came up, we had been working on obtaining motorcycle licensure, uh, saving up money, right, to buy a motorcycle, all that kind of stuff. Each one of us, so that we could ride motorcycles across the country. We graduated high school. I was uh, struggling with my funds, right? I needed some extra money, and I was like, you know what? I swim in the morning time and I swim uh, and, and I was, I, I get up really early. And so when I, when I would come back from swimming, I would be the one to wake everybody up to get up to go to school. Well, the kids were old enough. They didn't really need to get woken up. They were doing pretty good. So I, I would drive by the bus barn at Noblesville bus barn and I would see the flashing lights on the buses and I'd be like, I could do that. I was like, it's up early in the morning. This would, this would be easy. I, I, I can do that. You know? And I talked to some people about it. This is probably a year in the making. I needed to make some extra money. It's early, crazy early in the morning. I can do it. I like driving. And I don't really care who the kids are or what they are. It's a 20-minute, you know, commitment with kids on the bus. I can handle it, right? No big deal. 
So uh, it just kind of evolved into it, and uh, and it turned out that uh, I got I got hired. I was able to drive it. Well, then I learned the hierarchy of the bus <laughs> there's, thing. And there's, there's, a, there's kind of a uh, I won't what do, like uh, there's a little bit of a. Uh, it's like you take a crime family <laughs> and uh, like mellow it out a little bit and put bus routes in oh. the mix. And it's kind of the oh. way it works. There's man. a, Oh man. There, yeah. And, and, and you guys, I'm a baby in this, in this field, right? <laughs> These are, this is a retired community for the most part. They're great yeah. people, yeah. but uh, they're amazing. These guys have, uh, you know, they've got the patience of a chopping block, right? Like some, <laughs> some, not all. Some, some. Are, some are about ready to snap, but for some, the most part. Right. <laughs> so uh, it was really great. So, uh, and, and there was a process. It would probably take a few years before I got settled into my own mm-hmm. route, right? So like I was like the substitute driver and I'd have to cover, you know, for other drivers and all that stuff, which is tricky. You go there at five o'clock in the morning, it's raining and it's dark outside. Here's your paper directions for picking up 40 kids go, you got to get them to school in 40 minutes, you know, that kind of thing. You're like, okay. <laughs> so anyway, it evolved. So what happened was, is I, I had an opportunity to take on a bus route. They knew that I'd say yes, because it was a committed route. Same thing every day. You don't have to go through it. And I was like, absolutely. One of the things that I did at Bethel when I came on at, the, at church there was to really reach out to our neighbors at our church, right? And I wanted to work on building good relationships with our neighbors. That's a big thing to me just as, as a resident, as a community member, but also the staff person there. So that our community that is directly our neighbors at our church, they know us, they at least know me, and they know that I represent our church and that we will help you and you can help us and that, whatever that works like, right? Whatever it looks like. When I got that route for the bus, it was of all the neighborhoods, Noblesville Schools is the largest employer in Hamilton County, which is crazy. There's a lot of schools, there's a lot of kids. It's really, really big. <clears throat> the route that I was given was our neighbors for our kids, which was shocking to me. So not only was I getting a second job that could have been anywhere in town, but it happened to be along the you know five mile stretch where our church is. So I had kids that um, at middle school that I would not have had a connection with otherwise. I've had two or three kids from our bus route have said, you know, uh, Joe, what do you do? You know, I put my, I put a big hello, my name is sticker on the, on the bus, right? It says Joe Rudy, right? And so, or Mr. Joe Rudy. So you can call me Joe, you can call me Joe Rudy, you can call me Mr. Joe, Mr. Joe Rudy, whatever you want to do, Mr. Rudy. Most of them just call me Joe, which I'm great with. And so they're like, what do you do during the day, man? What do you do? What do you do? And I was like, oh, well, I'm the youth director over there at Bethel, and, and uh, I do your youth group stuff, you know? And they're like, oh, really? That's cool. Uh, I don't really go to church, but uh, I might come to yours sometime. Anyway, that happened a couple times. So I had kids that just showed up that had never uh, been over there before. I had a kid come over and hang out with us for one of our lock-ins. That was unbelievable. So the kicker was is that the neighborhood kids that are around us the reason that bus route was open was because these were the colorful kids. These were the pain in the butt kids. It was a little tricky and nobody wanted to do it because they would just, they wasn't a great route. It, it really wasn't. And it wasn't the kids. It was just behaviors, right? right? So um, a lot of bullying, um, a lot of uh, kids sitting stone cold in their seats and some real boisterous kids on top of that. Um, and so truthfully, all I did was uh, listen, talk, engage with them. Um, I've never written up a kid on that bus route. I never will, man. Like, I don't understand how, I mean, I guess I, I know how it works, right? But I, I don't understand why you wouldn't have a conversation with the kid. Yep. Uh, you get just a window of time. I mean, just a small window. And so um, I always try to speak up to them every time. So these kids that are bullies, I pull them off, say, hey, man, can I talk to you for one minute? And they'll do it. They'll talk to me for one minute. I was like, you don't have to respond. There's aliens. <laughs> you don't have to respond at all. And then uh, – and then, uh, uh, so the, it, it was, it was really interesting. If I spoke up to them, the, the response that I got back from those kids was more often than not, um, take care, right? Like it was so interesting. It'd be like, Hey, uh, see you, Joe, take care, be safe. Right. I would get these responses that were more caring than whatever. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. You know, right. Yeah. Any of yeah. that stuff. Right. Yep. Yeah. So you drive bus, yeah. you're, it served its purpose too. Yeah. I bought the motorcycle. We rode across the country. You it was did two weeks. Oh, That's so right. good, so two good. Weeks. Right, it's crazy. Hands and everything. Yeah. Joe, you are uh, 
you know, the benefit of this show is that Andy and I get to hear from dads yeah. uh, who do really cool stuff yeah. with their kids. It gives us great ideas. ideas. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Listen, and I'm, I'm adding you to the list of listen, please, scary, great ideas. Please, please, please. That, uh, uh, scary, great idea. Please write this down now. Max <laughs> Rudy motorcycle trip, the stories of the leading up to that month of the kid graduating oh, high school, oh, yeah. blowing himself up, <laughs> crashing a collector car and driving 5,000 miles across the country. It all happened. Yes. And the purpose was yeah. because it was his trip. Yes. And that's what we kept saying. This is your trip. You want to do this. We're going to make it happen. Yeah. But we're going to go slowly and take calculated steps. Do you, do you feel like uh, were things different between the two of you after that trip? Uh, yeah, most definitely. There was a, a level of maturity that came out of that. You know, I mean, again, it was um, uh, a conscious thought on on my part to not make this is not my trip. This is not about me. This is about my son. This is trying to raise up my son and say, like, I'm really proud of you. This is this opportunity. So when he wants to go to Taco Bell or, or Burger King or whatever for like the fifth time, that's where we go. I don't say, no, man, I'm not eating that again. Right. I, I just... That I try to not keep the conflicts to a minimum, yeah. right? And be like, oh, you want to go to Denny's one more time? Yes. All right, let's go. Mm -hmm. Moons over Miami. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, is that your go-to? Moons go -to. over Miami? Moons over Miami. Oh. Oh, we are so united in this. Uh, we don't have a Denny's anywhere near here now, mm. but boy, mm. when I can grab some moons over mm. Miami. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. So, okay, Joe, yeah. you, you're just, I mean, obviously killing it on all fronts here. And, uh, no, <laughs> and, uh, I, I joke around because Joe and I, we've had a lot of, because uh, there, there honestly were, there were a lot of challenges. I mean, oh, just yeah. raising kids, raising, you know, oh, yeah. getting, getting a, a gifted uh, and yet uh, getting a gifted young man who marches to the beat of his own drummer uh, through high school Absolutely. and to that place. Yeah, he and, made it. Yeah. You know, Joe's hair is relatively the the okay. gray is, is there, but it's limited. Yeah. And it's Thank a surprise, you. quite honestly. I Thank like, you. I like it. Thank you. Uh, so just, just as all that is, you know, as you're on that journey of parenthood, that's true. you then enter in to an event that takes the national spotlight, yeah. uh, an event that was in a series of other unfortunate events that have been happening in our country. Absolutely. So it was, it was that May. So it, while we are ramping up for this motorcycle trip, right, that's all happening in that same month of May. Um, on that particular day, uh, when I would finish with the bus, right, I'm fairly close to the church. So when I get done with the bus in the morning, then I come over to church and I would do, you know, my daily routine stuff and whatever's going on, property stuff, youth stuff, all those things. Um, that particular day, I happened to be outside, uh, out back, and uh, I could hear sirens, uh, and I heard sirens, but um, more uh, than just the normal sirens. And probably the, the most alarming sound to me was the sound of speed. So it wasn't the sirens, but it was the, it was the rate in which those sirens and those cars, right, unmarked, by the way, were going on country roads to school, and which is the same school that I just left, right? So this was at uh, Noblesville West, uh, and that was the day that, uh, that we had our school shooting. Um, and, uh, we had, uh, two people injured in the school shooting and, uh, everybody just, just swarmed to the building. Um, everything screeched to a, to a halt for the most part. Uh, and, um, as I, I immediately had gone home, I had two kids that were in school at that time. Um, we had, uh, uh, some other family friends that were in town cause this is all, you know, the end of the school year and graduation stuff and things like that. The weather was nice. Um, and, uh, I, I, when I knew, I didn't know, um, I suspected that it was West, but at the time I didn't know that there was a school shooting there. Um, I didn't receive any communication from the schools that said I needed to, uh, go to school, right. Or anything. I, I went straight home to make sure that, cause we lived really close to the high school. And at the time I kind of thought maybe something was happening in high school. Um, our house is kind of has a big open porch and a lot of our youth group kids, they all know to come to our house if they're in town or if they're close by. So we ended up being a hub for a little bit uh, for a handful of kids, not a bunch, but a handful of kids. And um, uh, the bus drivers, not myself, but a lot of the other bus drivers that were still there, they went to the bus garage. 
They um, actually transported kids from other buildings. There was a lot of confusion. Um, there were so many police and so many emergency vehicles um, that that was uh, that was intense. That was that was a big day, man. That was a really big day. The the first, uh, as, as far as I know, the only school shooting with with zero fatalities, um, which is interesting, has a lot to be said to uh, uh, Mr. Seaman. Yeah, uh, there was a teacher who stopped it all. But yep. Yeah, he, that's a big day. Yeah, and um, as it turns out, yeah. you had a connection to the shooter. Well, we didn't know who was involved at first. And that was really tough because you're talking about kids, right? Yep. Under 18. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of legalities and a lot of people not talking, but um, to our shock and, and surprise uh, that the shooter was a kid that I, that I knew that's in my confirmation class was my kid, uh, David. And um, when, when we found that out, um, we were all just kind of, dumbstruck, you know, just didn't know what to do with that. That was really tough. So this is a kid that's in our, in our, our, not, I want to say our youth group, but uh, he's in our confirmation class. Youth group for us is high school kids, confirmation classes, middle school kids. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, he's in my class every Sunday, you know, he's in with uh, two or three other teachers of mine and we're all together. And, uh, and he's there and he said, he's a rock solid kid. I mean, this is a, you guys got to understand too, that I, I, I'm used to the behaviorally challenged kids and young adults, right? I'm used to the conflict. I'm used to the weird kids. I'm used to the ones that are quirky, um, that, uh, that, uh, behave differently. And it doesn't really strike me as a problem as so much as to, um, like uh, flavor or color or, you know, all this stuff that just adds to this, this kid, this person's, uh, individuality, you know? And, uh, David to me was just, uh, an amazing kid. I mean, it's very interesting. He had cool glasses. The only kid I knew that carried a briefcase to school on occasion, <laughs> uh, just a real interesting, yeah. interesting kid. Yeah. And, and it was kind of fascinating, but that was, that was, uh, that was tough where we moved from there, um, as a, as a church, uh, and as a, as a youth group and, and talking about how we do that, that was when it became clear, um, of behaving, as Christ-like as possible, mm-hmm. right? And for me, uh, the one of the biggest things that we talk to our kids about is that you're you're in control. You're in charge of you. That's it. You're in charge of you and nobody else. Um, and that if you want if you want people to know Jesus, then you should know Him in you, and then you should treat people the way you want to be treated. And so when they get to know you, they get to know more about Jesus, right? right. And so that's. Uh, that's, that's kind of it. It's pretty simple. Um, and so at that point it was really tough because so many people struggle with someone who tries to take lives for no apparent reason. Um, and how do we love a person that does that? How do we, how do we welcome and hug and hold, uh, keep, uh, well being welcome to a person that does that or a family that has a child that does that. Right. Um, and so it's tough growing up a tree. It was up in, uh, in Eastern and she had, a, she had a similar, uh, uh, tragedy up there with a school accident and shooting, um, not so much, uh, just a shooting, but an accident. And that's just so hard to, be forgiving and to mm-hmm. show grace and um, to accept all that. It's just really, that's really tough. That's really tough. So I've been fortunate. Um, Dave, we, we've known each other for a while and Dave and I, um, I have a, we kind of have a standing date. So I, I see David, uh, I try to see him once a month as best I can. Um, and, uh, we usually do the first Thursday or something like that. And, uh, he's moved around a little bit, but he's, um, uh, it's been really interesting uh, observing the situations, right? So it's every time we get together from the very beginning, it's always been trying to think of how, what, what are you looking forward to? Or what, what do you, what do you see? Or what are you, what are you looking forward to? Even if it's going to bed at night, right? Uh, what are you looking forward to just like right now? And I realized after like doing that several times that it was all about uh, hope. Like, what are you hopeful for? What are you looking towards? Right. Mm-hmm. And so um, I just try to stick to that and try to, try to uh, uh, see how, 
we can have conversations, play cards, eat junk food, right? I mean, just like any of that stuff and have a conversation about what are what is it that you're looking forward to, you know? Because yeah. um, he's still there and he will be. And, you know, I don't know. That's the tough part. You just, you just don't know. You don't know what the time span is or any of that stuff. And so, and really his, his, um, cause it's been a while since we've talked about yeah. this, but like, yeah. as far as how, cause he is in a youth, faci- he is in a yeah. youth facility. Yeah, exactly. So it's a, it's a high end, uh, a high detentional facilities. Pendleton penitentiary is a big, big old penitentiary in North side of Indianapolis. And it's a juvenile section for that. And okay. so, yeah, he's in there and he's got about the most seniority in there now. Yeah. But yeah. 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 So, yeah. And I mean, how did you, uh, obviously for I mean, I can only imagine as a youth pastor where mm-hmm. it's like, okay, we have, we have a student that has been involved in something like this. How did you navigate it with the other students and the other families at your yeah. church? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, um, my wife, Tree, she, uh, does a lot. Of, uh, she's a counselor for the primary and the elementary school at Heights, just North of us. And we've talked a lot about conflict resolution and, uh, trying to, uh, have meetings to where people can get together and talk about things, right. That are, they're feel passionate about to try to get some grace and uh, some, some kind of resolution out of there. Um, and so basically we just kind of try to create the space to where people feel comfortable that they can, um, bring up the things that are hurt that they're hurting with in that situation because those traumatic situations they bring up so much pain and and like maybe even that they were bullied or teased or uh, uh, even abused as a kid it brings this stuff up that they don't want to talk about in the first place but they feel like it has to be addressed before I can move on to the next thing and so um, we tried to create those spaces as minimalistically as possible for adults for parents. Uh, and then also separately for our kids, our middle school and our high school kids at the time. Um, yeah, that's trying to create that environment yeah. for those kids. And it worked out pretty decent for us. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, what else are you going to do? It's kind of how we felt. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. Well, and, and just, uh, yeah, being committed to reconciliation and what, I mean, man, uh, cause that's where the rubber meets the road, right? Like the, oh, sure. the situation that you were in was, like someone has done this thing that is, I mean, about as severe as you can probably imagine, you right. know, as far okay. as bringing harm to others, but still being committed to the fact that uh, God is bigger than that. Right. Um, and that there is an ability to, uh, yeah, willing to overcome. Absolutely. So dude, I'm, I'm grateful yeah. that you're, that you're, well, I'm grateful that you were in the place that you were. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah. We, we need, we need people that will, in the name of Jesus, go into hard places. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, and you know, it's like, it's like Mr. Rogers said, we're man, look for the helpers, man. Oh, absolutely. The helpers? There's always absolutely. helpers. Right? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Wow. I tell you, we had this one time, I'll tell you this real quick. We, I can't take David's stuff anymore. Right. It's different. But when he was here and it was very, very early stages, he uh, had mentioned how much he loved curly fries. And so like, uh, it was, it was kind of silly, but at the time we, we were going through and just doing a Lord's prayer kind of thing every once in a while. Right. And so, uh, uh, I had brought, I was able to get in a small package of curly mm-hmm. fries and a small Coke and I was able to bring them in. And, and what, what we did was, uh, I, I, I turned it into communion. I didn't, these aren't holy sacramental items, <laughs> right? Right. But we hey, talked buddy, about it as being the your, body. Blood. Your, your Lutheran requirements are way higher than ours. So, you know, whatever you feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I will never forget. That was one of the most meaningful communion type experiences uh, that I've yeah. ever, that oh, I've ever had. Yeah. Uh, and, and it, I don't know. I don't think it impacted David that much, but who knows? But, <laughs> but it was a, uh, it was a big deal and it, it felt, uh, it felt really great. That was an awesome opportunity. To be able Beautiful. To do beautiful well joe i'm grateful for your story man i'm grateful that you uh just i'm grateful for you you're a good you're a good friend and as soon as i'm allowed to travel again we're gonna we're gonna meet in person (laughs) and i'll meet you for real race yeah yeah real. yes (laughs) we'll do it for real uh but buddy thank you so much uh for your time before we let you go though yeah we we have to do this. Nice. So, Andy, let us know what time it is. Now it's time for the Dudes and Dads Pop Quiz. 
Oh, yes. It's that time of the night where we <laughs> ask you random questions <laughs> that you have not prepared for because we are making them up as we go. So I will start with this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I will start with this one here. Um, what was your favorite car that you've owned? Oh, favorite. Yeah, favorite. Wow. And you know what, man? The first car that I had uh, that was mine was a 1983 Pontiac Fiero. And I'll tell you what, it was a five speed. That thing was fun. And uh, the benefit was that I could only take one person. So people were like, <laughs> I want to go for a ride. I'd be like, sorry, man, I just got the one seat, right? <laughs> nice. I think it'd be the Fiero. Beautiful. Fear oh, that makes sense. Although, although this just popped in my head in 1970. Oh my gosh! When I graduated high school, my grandparents gave me 500 bucks, and my sister bought a word processor, and I bought a 1974 Land Cruiser. <laughs> oh, <laughs> most favorite. That's beautiful. That's right. 500 dollars worth of tires, man. That was wow. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe, um, I'm going to ask, do you recall the first audio cassette that you purchased yourself? Would you have a guess what that would be? You know what, man? It was probably a single. Okay. And it was, it was probably around the realm of like, maybe like, I want to say living color. Is that right? That's, that I can't seems even get this. very possible. Golly. We're going to go with that. That sounds okay. right to me. That okay. should be right for you. Okay. That should be the absolute correct <laughs> answer I can, for I'm you. Try, I can visually kind of see the, 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 the little cassette, but I feel like it was a single. Living color purchased. single cassette. Beautiful. All right, Andy, you're up next. All right. I'm going to go ahead and say, what's your favorite junk food? My favorite. Favorite jaw food? Junk, junk food. food. Oh, junk food. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite junk food. Man, I like chili cheese Fritos. All right. All right. That's solid. I mean, just cheese and crackers in general, but chili cheese Fritos, that's a treat. All right, Joe. Uh, one uh, clothing item that you cannot live without. Hmm. I'm very fond of the jeans that I have on right now. They're like stretchy. So they don't feel, they don't feel so constricted. I feel you dog. Hey, that's... If I had to take one pair of pants, it's these man. Yeah. When the jean makers recently that's figured right. out that, that us guys at like, you know, at our age and size, we like, don't give me the stretchy waistband no, thing. No, I just no, want no. just generally no, no. stretchier jeans That's all right. around and I will feel better. That's I'll right. Feel better. It's a That's little, good. it's a, they're not quite yoga pants, but man, if you put them next to them and stretched it, it's about the same. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. So this is going to be my last question here for you, but uh, what was the first concert band that you saw in, in concert? Oh, the first one. Gosh. I'm the making the think one, here. The first concert or band. Yeah. I know. Give me a second. Oh, you're good. Yeah. Take the first time. One. All right. So the one that sticks out to me as being uh, like the first adventure, like I, my buddy had tickets and I was able to go was, uh, and I didn't even, I didn't, I knew of them, but I didn't know them that well, but that sticks out so much because it was visually stimulating was the Nelson brothers. Nelson, do you remember Nelson? The two twin brothers with the skinny, thin, blonde hair. Was I, the, do. at the I don't. I, oh I don't. Gosh. Because my older my older cousins were big into Nelson. Yeah, g- Google it, guys. It's as, <laughs> it's as beautiful and terrifying as you might think. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man. I'm slightly embarrassed about that one. That's Nelson. good stuff. Ooh. Nelson. We're going to let's. Andy, let's find a photo and put that up just so we can celebrate <laughs> Joe's musical taste. Uh, final, final question, Joe. Um, let's see. Uh, where would you like to take your wife for your guys' twentieth anniversary? Where would you? Where? Where would? Where? Where do you guys need to go? Nice. We'd probably go to Greece or something like Ooh. that. We've talked about that. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we've also talked about, I don't know where, but you know, one of those huts that you got to, you know, like uh, walk out a big long plank to, or maybe swim out to. Like, that'd be cool. Oh, I was going to say, like, like you were talking like a yurt, but it's not a yurt. No, no, like, no, you're no, talking like, like a, a tropical. Something a tropical, tropical something warm, but I think probably Greece would probably be Lovely. it. I bet we'd go to Greece. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Joe. You have successfully completed the Dudes and Dads pop my quiz. First. Uh, I, my it's, first. My first podcast. It's good. That's good. Um, dude, we're so grateful for you. We're, uh, again, I'm, I'm just excited to hope to see you again soon, but, uh, man, uh, also praying for you as you and many, many, many other parents across this great country of ours are graduating yeah. a senior in weird times. That's right. Um, we're doing we, uh, we wish the best for you and all, and all thank the you. wisdom in doing that. So thank you. We'll take it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, Guys, thanks for joining us again. Uh, all of all of uh, the information you ever need about this show is available at dudesanddadspodcast.com. Show notes, uh, the terrible picture of Nelson that you're going to see on there. Uh, <laughs> uh, any show ideas, responses, input you've got for us uh, can be sent over to dudesanddadspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, guys, Thanks for joining us. Uh, next episode, I can successfully say we've got April Diaz, good friend, coming up next episode, uh, talking about navigating uh, big challenges, grief, and loss with students. It's a really, uh, with, with our own children, really important topic for the season that we're in right now. So please join us. And until next time, friends, grace, grace and, and peace. peace.